Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to another video. I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, we are looking at two different stocks that are in the tech sector, great companies, really down at the moment. But before we actually look at the fundamentals of each one of these companies, I just want to say, you know, apologies for not posting for almost a week because I have had COVID. My voice is just coming back. You know, when the kids go to school and they get one of those, you know, flu things and they come back home these days is covid and then we got the whole family got it alhamdulillah we're okay now we're doing great my voice is kind of coming back so apologies if it's a little bit all over the place but let's get started the video now looking at this stock market today it looks like it's beautiful day everything is green apart from a couple of companies happy days but when you look at it for the week it's a different ball game and when you look at actually a year to date it's also not great. So looking at this, you might be thinking, what's going on? You're losing a lot of money every single day. You look at the market and you realize you're losing money. Okay. And it's not nice. It's not nice to feel that. At one point, my portfolio was almost a 42,000, uh, 52,000 pounds. But right now it's under 50,000 pounds. And guess what? I have been adding money to, to this portfolio almost every single week. So it is going down and it will keep going down maybe for a while because when you look at the, um, the fee and greed index, you can see it's extreme fear right now. And it wasn't not long ago that way we had extreme greed, for example. Okay, that was in November 2021. November 2021? 20, yeah, 2021. November of 2021, it was actually the extreme it was extreme greed it was 77 77 and right now we are here okay why is that happening because of interest rates because of what the fed is doing because of recessions because of the war there's a million different things going on okay but one thing you really need to think about is what is your long-term strategy what's your plan okay and when you look at the sectors for example every single sector for this year is actually done apart from energy energy is the only one that's outperforming everything but remember energy is not just um you know energy energy stocks were not doing great in 2020 but they bounced back obviously um but yeah so generally everything is down um and but you have to really focus on your long-term plan what is it that you want to do we always talk about you know buying a great companies hold them forever buy them when they're down and forget about the market don't listen to the news all of those amazing things that we've talked about and the fact that there's a fear and greed situation here the fact that everyone is fearful right now warren buffett remember what he said he said when everyone is fearful okay be greedy when everyone's greedy be faithful and that basically you always have to kind of do the opposite okay of what's going on so when everyone was greedy and everyone was buying these tech companies that were going up 20 30 40 percent every single week every single month okay what were you doing at that time? Were you following the crowd and buying those? Or were you extremely humble and looking for quality companies that were undervalued? Surely that's a lot of the stocks genuinely that in my portfolio, I was buying at that time. I was buying great companies like Broadcom, for example, okay, the three um, M's and so on. At the time where everybody was actually buying these high flyers, even though Broadcom is actually quite a great company. So today we're going to look at two companies. We're going to look at Qualcomm first. Qualcomm is in the semiconductor sector. It's currently trading $131 per share and it's actually down 30%. 30% a year to date. And that's absolutely crazy. When you look at a company like this, okay, and when you look at the financials, so the basically the, um, the fiscal year for 2020, um, the first quarter, look what they've done. Um, $11.2 billion. That was up 41%. Okay, year on year revenue growth. Okay, GAP EPS and non GAP are both absolutely brilliant. And when you look at the different sectors of their business, everything was up. Okay, and this is the stock that's right now down 30%. Has anything happened to the actual business? The underlining assets have anything else basically happened to the company? Is there any reason why the stock's down? stocks down is because everybody else is worried about this okay so what you want to do is you look at the financials okay check out the company see if they actually head in the right directions and then obviously add it to your portfolio if you think it's actually a buy for you 
for me is in my portfolio it's been in my portfolio for a long time and i'll tell you exactly what i'm going to do next so the first thing we're going to do is just look at the financials this company like i said is basically in the semiconductor and um, one of the things they do is they have actually a patent for the um, wireless communications 3g 4g 5g okay they got rf front end they've actually work with and uh, samsung these days before it used to be just apple but now they work with samsung okay they work with a lot of smart um, phone companies especially 70 percent of i think something i think it was about 70 percent of the um i can't remember the statistics now but when it came to samsung, samsung they actually worked with them for, for not long but it's actually their revenue came quite a bit of their revenue came from that but they're trying to diversify now they get into internet of things and the software side of things so it's absolutely in a very good position let's have a look at the financials first okay currently trading 131 dollars per share eps almost to 10 146 billion dollar market cap economic mode i completely disagree with morningstar i think it has a wide mode and one of the reasons i said it has a wide mode is because of this patent okay the patents actually they sell it to other companies no other company can actually design these things without getting the pay basically paying for um that that basically uh, patent okay in terms of capital allocation is standard that's absolutely fine bait is quite high we're normally looking for something and uh, anything that's below one PE ratio, can you imagine a tech company right now is actually trading PE of 13.41? That's absolutely madness. And when it comes to price to free cash flow, it's just under 13. Price to sales, 3.8. For tech companies, I normally go for about anything below 15, 10. 10 or 15 depends okay it depends on what risk i want to take so pr price to sales of 3.8 okay annual dividend yield of 2.3 so look at this it's a tech company but they're paying over two percent dividend okay five-year growth rate of six percent dividend growth streak of 18 years payout ratio only 25 so they've got room to improve 80 percent safety in terms of morning uh, simply safe dividend according to them um, they're saying it's about 80% safe, free cash flow of $7.19 billion. So they've got enough money to use for research and development, to actually buy back their shares, to actually issue um, more dividends if you like, and all sorts of things. Profit margins, 28. Operating margins, 32.7. Return on equity, 107. Revenue year on year, 33.51% which is absolutely amazing revenue th um, three years okay um, compounded annual growth rate of almost 23 percent total returns or for 10 years okay that includes dividends and price appreciation is right now is about 10.45 and current ratio above one which is good so that means they have they basically can't enough money to pay off their dividend basically so when you look at these ratios and you look at the price and you look at how much is actually undervalued at the moment it's almost unbelievable okay next 14 basically five years they're expecting these to grow about the earnings to grow about 14.3 percent simply value um simply wall street says is actually undervalued almost 50 percent the price should be 255 and currently trading only 131 okay and then when you look at the morning star it's 19 percent discounted at the moment and fair value of 163 dollars per share tip ranks 45 percent upside and they saying it's 192 and they saying absolutely is a moderate buy for me i will say it's a strong buy and i will tell you exactly what i'm going to do next because this is a stock that i own in my portfolio let me quickly show you the revenue okay so quote uh, basically yearly so 2017 um, all the way to 2021 as you can see 22.26 to just right now almost a third 40 so almost a double in that number okay gross profit is increasing from 12 to 23 almost the net income is also increasing from 2.44 to right now 11.16 billion dollars and when you look at the free cash flow okay which is very important because that's how they pay you that's how they pay the dividends and all those things okay 4.31 billion dollars to right now 7.2 billion dollars 
So this company cannot do anything wrong at the moment, in my opinion. Okay, I was very bullish of this big company before, and I st I am still bullish on this company. Okay, right. I'll tell you exactly what I'm going to do going forward. Let's look at the next company, and the next company is another semiconductor company, Broadcom technology company that I also own in my portfolio. And right now, when you look at the year to date, is also down 21%. Again, absolutely a great business. Okay, in terms of their revenue, okay, it comes from two segments: the semiconductor and the infrastructure, the software inf okay, infrastructure. So they normally used to have a lot of these just semiconductor solution side of things. So in terms of networking, broadband, servers, wireless, industrials, and all of these things. But lately, they started basically buying these companies, cybersecurity um, companies and so on, including okay, Norton Antivirus, basically like in the UK, what we call the Norton Antivirus, which is owned by Symantec. They actually purchased this company. I didn't even know. Okay, So they own that company. They own a storage and network device. Um, networking devices so currently a lot of this is coming from the semiconductor um, solutions but the infrastructure software is also growing and they've actually now just today they have announced that well they they were waiting for the announcement i think um but they're in talks to buy actually vmware vmware is a software company um it's been around for a very long time I think they've got something to do with Dell. I can't remember whether they were part of Dell or Dell bought them. Or I can't remember exactly the story. But they are buying this company. They're in talks to actually buy this company. And if they do that, this is huge. That will probably be the biggest um, acquisition basically this year. Okay. So that's a Broadcom. Let's have a look at the financials of this business. Like I said, they actually are in loads of different um, industries right now. In basically industries right now. They currently trade in five hundred and twenty-three dollars per share. EPS almost seven, almost to eighteen. Okay, market cap of two hundred and thirty-three billion dollars. Economic mode is narrow. Again, similar to um, Qualcomm. I don't think they deserve that. I think based on their technology and how sticky it is. Okay, I think they should be a wide mode. Hey, but that's morning stuff for you. Capital allocation is standard. Um, beta is actually. Just about buff one, which is fine. P is slightly higher, okay, almost to 30. And then but price to free cash flow is about 18. And price to sales is just 8.59. So that tells me the stock is actually either fairly valued or undervalued at the moment, okay, based on the price to free cash flow and price to sales. Dividend yield almost 3%. I absolutely love this. Five-year growth rate of 43%. Dividend growth streak of 11 years and payout ratio only 52. So they have enough room to basically increase that dividend if they need to. Although they've the last five years, they basically the average was 43%. They still have room to improve, okay, if they wanted to. Dividend safety 67. I think they, with this sort of a cash, they deserve a better margin, I think. They should be about 70s or 80s right now, but 67 is absolutely fine. Anything below 61 is a little bit questionable. Above 61 is fine. Free cash flow, $13.7 billion in the bank. Profit margin, almost 18%, more than 28%. 35% of operating margins, return on equity 33%, revenue um, percentage in terms of growth wise in the last year, year to year is about 16% or 15.46%. Revenue th in three years or compounding growth rate of the last um, three years is about 10%. Re total returns, including dividends, price appreciation, 35%. That's probably one of the highest that I've seen in the last few months. Count ratio. Okay, just above well 2.44, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, so let's have a look at basically what the analysts are saying in terms of growth, in terms of the valuation of this business. So the next five years, Yahoo Finance is actually expecting 14.7% earnings growth. Simply Wall Street says 40% undervalued. The price should be 905. I'm not sure about that. Okay. I would say about 600 to maybe between 500 and 600, maybe 600 to 700, not, no more than that. Okay, six to seven. I think that would be fair. Okay, and that's probably what they um, should have gone for. But 905, I don't know. They do use um, discounted cash flow models. So I would, I, would, I would love to see 
what they put in, in terms of growth side of things, in terms of margins. Morningstar valuation says fairly valued, $545 per share. Tip ranks almost for 35 percent upside and 712 is their price target for the by the end of the year and according to them it's a strong buy right so i own both companies when you look at the a business like this okay and you realize is in terms of growth side of things okay so the total revenue for broadcom for example 2017 to 2021 again 17.64 20 almost one almost 22 23 23.9 27 okay and then it's 28.5 so it is definitely heading the right directions the gross profit is growing okay the operating income is also growing okay and then when you look at the net income from 1.6 let's call it 1.7 billion dollars to right now 7.53 billion dollars in this space of five years okay absolutely amazing and when you look at the cash flow as well Again, similar sort of story, $5.48 billion to right now $13.71 billion. So absolutely brilliant business. They are in the right industry. It's a semiconductor is a massive shortage right now. I'm sure companies will be putting a lot of money into these companies in the next few months or years to come. Okay. Um, in my opinion, they're both absolutely a buy right now for me. Okay, the only issue I have when it comes to Broadcom, for example, okay, I own only five shares, but I'm actually up quite a bit, 400, so 25%. So if I buy it right now, I'm just, I genuinely do not think we have seen the end of the sale. If it goes back up again, Alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm happy with that. But if the sale arc continues, right, in the next few months, then I'm definitely going to start buying more of this company. But the, definitely the one I would like to now buy more of is Qualcomm. Because if you look at this, right, at one point I was up about $500 or 500 pounds. Right now, I'm actually in the green because of the FX impact. <laughs> For once, is actually this is on my side, right? Otherwise, I would have been actually down almost 7, 6%. So my price, the average price for this company is $138 per share right now is 130 so i own 15 shares and i'm going to buy right now the market is still open okay 20 minutes to go so i'm right now i'm gonna add five more shares of this company into my portfolio okay and i'm gonna send that to the market and then see what happens like i said i absolutely love this company i love their business model although i keep saying i'm not gonna buy more of the technology sector they look like, the, in terms of growth, based on what we've just seen, in terms of the future of these companies, right? I actually believe in these companies, and I know they will be around for a long time. Whatever happens, I don't think we will see this stock, okay, around these prices in maybe this time next year. I might be wrong. I might be right. I don't know. Only Allah knows what's going to happen. As far as I know, I'm going to buy great companies at the discounted prices. If it continues to go down, I'm actually going to buy more. My next price tag is $125 per share. Okay. And if that happens, then perfect. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. $125. If it happens, I'll buy more of this company. But right now, as you can see, I have added extra five shares. Okay. My price is now $136 per share. Okay. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you do, then you like the transparency and you like the analysis and things that we're doing here. All we ask for is just for you to just give it a like, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if you have any questions. Inshallah, I'll be doing a few more videos in the next couple of days. Inshallah, as I get better, my voice is kind of coming back. I apologize if it's a little bit all over the place tonight. I um, appreciate your time. Assalamu alaikum. Take care.